Insects have been around for about 480 million years. That's twice as long ago as the oldest dinosaurs. So they're really ancient. And actually this is really kind of the planet of the insects. And we humans have only been around for a, a few hundred thousand years. I've been studying bees for about 30 years now, but I, I've been interested in insects forever. There's an extraordinary diversity of little creatures crawling, hopping, buzzing, flying. There's a whole world and most people have never looked at it. And I'm sure if you do start to look, you, you get drawn in and, and suddenly you start to care. This woolly thistle is rather nice actually. I'm rather proud of this. It's a lovely leaf cutter bee busy foraging there at the moment. Bumblebees and honeybees collect pollen on their back legs on their pollen baskets. Whereas these ones have hairy tummies that they pack the pollen into the hairs. Bees are really smart. They're capable of these extraordinary feats of navigation and communication and learning. They can recognize human faces. Um, they can even be taught to play a kind of football. Uh, what the purpose of those experiments is, I'm not quite sure, but it's still kind of cool. I bought a book which was written in 1975 that talked about things like the shrill carder bumblebee as being a common species that could be found anywhere in the south of England in gardens and parks and so on. Today it's confined to about five small sites in the whole of the UK and they're, they're slowly blinking out. And I, you know, a sort of alarm bell started to ring so I started to kind of look into it. Insect declines are caused by lots of things all happening together. Probably globally the biggest driver is habitat loss and a lot of that is driven by the intensification of farming and all the associated pesticides. The evidence is that we are basically in the midst of a, another mass extinction event. But the sooner we act and the, and the more we do, the fewer things will disappear in the future and the richer the world will be. There's not a date by which it will be too late. In total, there are just over 22 million private gardens in the UK and more all the time as new houses are built. And collectively, they cover an area of more than 400,000 hectares, which is a bigger area than all of our national nature reserves. So my sort of, you know, crazy optimistic dream is that they're, they're all full of wildflowers. They're all managed for nature. They're all wildlife friendly and we get the councils on board so that the road verges and the roundabouts and the cemeteries and the parks are all full of wildflowers and pesticide free. The wildlife gardening movement has really taken off in recent years, so it isn't just a pipe dream, it's something that, that you can see. Overall, just not being too tidy is, is I, th I think, the main lesson I've learned over the years. You know, don't mow all the time, don't fastidiously weed, do not spray pesticides to kill things that you don't like the look of. Don't deadhead as soon as flowers are finished flowering. Trying to kind of pack in as many different kind of habitats as you can is, is the kind of key to getting as much wildlife as possible. It is really rewarding to, 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 to know you've created a home for, I mean, there must be countless millions of individual insects of, of certainly thousands of species living just in my garden here. Oh, that's really cool, and, and a lot of them we don't know anything about, you know. I, I think people intuitively do understand that we should take care of, of other creatures.